Welcome to Biggest Truths with Pastor V. Today, we'll be dealing with, we are continuing with our series on Beyond Shadows. Beyond Shadows. You don't want to worship God in the shadows. You don't want to worship Him in the symbols. You don't want to worship Him in the emblems and all those pictures. You want to worship Him in the fullness of the knowledge, how he reveals himself. And he wants us to know him. Listen to what the Bible says. When we read uh, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, it says from verse 31, John 8 from verse 31, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him, if you continue in my word, the importance of continuing in the word of God. What did he say in the book of John chapter 15, verse 7? If you remain in my word, and my word remain in you, you shall ask what you wish, and it will be done for you. If you remain, if you stay, if you continue, if you abide in my word, he says, you are my disciples indeed. Verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Check. It's the truth that you know that makes you free. Unless and until you know the truth, you will not be free. It is not only about the truth that you know, but it's the truth that you know and practice and continue in it and live in it that makes you free. The Bible says, today out here, I want to deal with five levels of ignorance. Five levels of ignorance. We'll just, in this part two, we're just going to see two in part, in part three. That's why I'll show you other three remaining levels of ignorance. The first level of ignorance is not to be aware, is not to know. Which means you have not received information con con concerning something or someone when you have not been informed, which means you are in the dark concerning whatever which you should to know or you need to know. You don't really need to know everything. You only need to know the right thing that you need to know. That which concerns your life, that which concerns your business, that concerns your family, that which concerns your spiritual matters is what you need to know. But the Bible says, when you read the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 11, it says, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. To you it is given to know the mystery of of God. He said, but to those that are without all things and parables, what does it mean? Which means to those that have not been given this revelation, this mystery, everything is in shadows, everything is in emblems, everything is in pictures. They are seeing but not seeing. They are hearing but not understanding what is being said. The word mystery, the, the word means a person initiated in secret mysteries, it means a land secret, a land secret. But this is the secret about divine things of God. This word has to do with a private knowledge. It has to do with a, a divine secret. Something, a secret thing is a, is a hidden thing or a secret, a secret which is natural unknown to human. I'll say, I'll say that again. A mystery is a secret thing hidden or a secret which is naturally unknown to human reason. So unless and until God reveals it, it remains a secret. But he said to us that have are born again, to us that have received Jesus Christ, it is no longer a secret. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6 to 8. He says, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, those that are mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, 
nor of the princes of this world that come to nothing, which come. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. He said, the wisdom that we speak is from a secret knowledge, is from uh, a private knowledge, is from what God has revealed to us. He says, it's a mystery. He says, even the hidden wisdom of God, which is ordained before the world, before the world unto our glory. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. That is so powerful. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 25, it says, For I will not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. He <laughs> says you shouldn't be ignorant of the mystery. He said there is a mystery, there is a secret that has been granted to you, which means it's an open secret to you that have received Jesus Christ. He says he doesn't want us to be ignorant about it. Why? Check what happens when you are ignorant about what you shouldn't be ignorant about. What you should know. When you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. He says when you are ignorant of the devices of Satan, Satan will take advantage of you. The word advantage there, it means to exploit. It means to outwit, to outsmart. He says when you are ignorant of the mystery that is given to you, Satan will outsmart you. Satan will take advantage of you. That's what the Bible says, my people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. He didn't say my people are destroyed because of the, that the devil is powerful. My people are destroyed because of ignorance. So the first level of ignorance is when you have not been informed. For example, someone who, have not, who have not heard about Jesus Christ have not been informed and there is no way they can take advantages of all the blessings, the graces and everything that comes with knowing Jesus Christ. He said, the, the, the word devices, they were said that we're not ignorant of his devices. It has to do with thoughts, strategies, you know, concepts, the plans that the devil uses work, uses to work against the people of God. But when he say, we know, when you know, you are not afraid. When you are aware, you are not afraid. And there are so many things that God does not want to be ignorant about. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. So there are spiritual gifts, spiritual endowments, spiritual blessings uh, that God has given to those that have received Jesus Christ. But he says, if you have not been informed about it, if you have not been taught about it, if you don't know anything about that, they will not work in your life. You will not take advantage of that. One of the things I have discovered as, as a pastor is that unless and until I teach on a certain subject, people remain bound in that area that they have not been taught. I remember there was a time in the church, one of the churches that I once pastored, one day I entered in the church and I looked at the people, I discovered poverty. I could see poverty in the faces of people. I dis that day I decided to teach on the blessings of the Lord. And suddenly, at that time when I was teaching, there was only, there was only one member that had a car. As time goes and not long, there was no place for parking. Everyone wanted to come here early so that they may find a place for, for parking. God had blessed his people. Why? Because I decided to teach on it. And I've seen the same thing with healing. When people are sick and they're not taught about it, they remain in bondage in that area. Wherever you're in, in, in bondage, it doesn't mean the devil is powerful. It only means you have not been informed. The second level of ignorance is not to understand to fail to comprehend is to be unable to grasp mentally. I'll say that again. The second level of ignorance is not to understand. You had, you had whatever was said, but you didn't understand it. Is to fail to comprehend, is to unable to grasp mentally. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. The Bible says, when Jesus, Luke chapter 9, verse 45, Luke 9, 45, he says, But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them. So Jesus spoke. When Jesus spoke, they couldn't understand. Why? Because it was hid from their mind. It was a mystery. Even if he spoke, they didn't understand. So for the fact that you something was spoken, for the fact that you were told something, it doesn't mean you understood it. And he says, you, he says, where am I? He says, that they perceive it not, they afraid to ask him of that same. What is amazing, even if they didn't understand, they were afraid to ask. There are people like that, even if they understand, they don't understand something, they, they, they agree with their heads. Yes, 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 as if they understood when they didn't understand it. The Bible says they were afraid to ask. When you don't understand something, don't be afraid to ask. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 19. This is very important. It says, when anyone hears, hears or heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and snatcheth away or snatch away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. <laughs> he says, when you hear the word of the kingdom, remember in the book of Mark, he said it is given to us to know the, the mysteries of the kingdom. But he says, when you hear and don't understand the wicked one, who is the wicked one? The devil. He said he comes and snatch away the word that was sown in their heart. The word, the, the, the word that is logos in, 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 Hebrew, in Greek, it means the written word of God, the sayings of God, the, intellig the intelligent word of God. Why did the wicked one come and take the word? He says, because they didn't understand. The word to understand, that it means to put together, um, a, like as if you are putting together a pieces of an object to as you put together to make something the features appear and he says when you fail to put together those pieces of an of a puzzle whatever you have had he said the wicked one comes and takes away that which was sown in their hearts the the the, the word to take away there the word has to do with to spoil to rob you know to loot he said that to plunder. He said the wicked one comes and loot. He comes and rob. He comes and take away. Can you see why the reason why many people are in bondage, why, why many people seem not to be receiving what belongs to them, is not because God is holding anything from anyone. In Christ Jesus, he has given us everything. But he says when you don't understand, the wicked one comes and snatch away. He comes and take that which belongs to you. He comes and loot. He comes and rob. He comes and plunder. He comes and strips off that which was supposed to be yours. But that should not be yours. And that will not happen to you in Jesus' name. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 11. He said, Behold, I come quickly. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. He said, Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take away thy crown when you read uh in this revelation, when you read the whole, what the message that he was given to this church in the book of Revelation in chapter 3, he was talking about his word. He was talking about that should hold fast to the word of God. He says, as long as they are holding fast to the word of God, there will be nobody that will take away their crown. Their crown is on the is determined on how they will hold on to the word of God, which means when they don't understand the word of God, when they lose the word of God, their crown, they lose their crown. You will not lose your crown as long as the word of God remains in your heart. Oh, that is so powerful. But I want to show you something that is so powerful. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Matthew 13, verse 15. It says, For this people's heart is wax gross. And their eyes are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Why have they closed? Least, should, least at any time they should see with their eyes. 
see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts what happened. I want you to see what happens when they see with their eyes, when they hear with their ears, and they understand with their hearts. I want you to see here, it's not talking about their physical eyes, it's not talking about their physical ears, it's not talking about their, their physical heart, it's talking about their spiritual ears, their spiritual eyes, and their spiritual heart. He says something will happen when they understand. He says they should be coveted and I will heal them. Listen to what he says. He says when they see, when they hear, when they understand, he says healing will come. Healing will come. The, the, the healing that he's talking about here, it means to cure, it means to make whole, it means to make perfect, to make sound, to restore both spiritually, mental, and bodily. The healing that he's talking about here is not just talking about the physical healing, but it's talking about there's some people, their finances are sick. Their families are sick. Their relationship is sick. Their businesses are sick. Everything around them is not sound. But it says when understanding comes, when you are able to put together the pieces of, an, of a puzzle through the word of God, he says healing will come. Restoration will come. Soundness will come. Perfection will come. Oh, uh, uh, prosperity will come, victory will come, that which you're looking for will start manifesting. Why? Because understanding came. As long as understanding has not come, you remain the same, in the same place. But today I pray for you, because the Bible tells us in the book of Luke that Jesus, when he broke the bread, their understanding was open. God wants our understanding to be open, and as long as our understanding are open, we are unstoppable. As long as we understand, we move forward. As long as we understand, we win. As long as we understand, we are healed. As long as we understand, we understand, we prosper. I want to pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that if there's any ignorance and anything that we have not been informed concerning the things of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that the hunger to study the word of God, that you will seek those ways that you need to understand so that understanding will come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you. I pray that your spiritual eyes will be open. I pray that wherever you need restoration as the word of God has come to you, that this way that you are hearing is bringing understanding to you, is opening your eyes, is opening your heart, is opening your ears. And I pray for you. Healing is yours. Victory is yours. Success is yours, deliverance is yours, and all the blessings of Christ Jesus are yours. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you. Bye.